everyone my name is kaushik and welcome back to letcode in this video we are going to learn about element.all that is used to find multiple elements in the page for example let's say that uh, if i go to google.com and if i search for cricket and hit enter now in this page we have cricket so many places right in so many places we have this cricket words so if i am going to search this then probably I, I am getting around 83 words, right? So it's uh, includes inclusive of uppercase as well as lowercase, but still it's highlighting 83 words, right? So we're going to find the same thing using uh, protector. So this was, if I'm not wrong, it was asked in CTS, I believe. So it, this is one of the interview questions. So I just picked that to demonstrate how to find multiple elements at the same time. Now, this is just an example in real time, how we are going to use this is, for example, let's say that we want to uh, find or verify the number of labels we have or we have to check the like uh, how many labels or how many checkbox or how many ready buttons have or in sometimes we have a web table I um, mean table so where we have to find number of rows or number of columns or based on that we are going to do some verification so at that point of course we have to uh, use multiple elements right so that is the thing we are going to learn today so here we are going to use the classes as we have learned the classes. So I'm going to use the class concept here. Of course, I'm going to use the JS. We'll learn about uh, the TS in later on videos. As of now, I'm going to use the JS, right? So here first we have to say class and then followed by uh, class name. So here I'm going to say, uh, maybe I can say find crickets. Right. So we have created class and let's create a function. So here I'm going to say get a uh, number of or get cricket words, something like this. Any meaningful name which is understandable, that's fine. Okay, so within this function, we are going to just uh, write each and everything within the same function. Of course, we can write so the precondition, post condition, everything in different different function. But since we are starting this class concept today. So I want to just make it very simple, right? So here, first thing, of course, we have to get the browser. So here I can say browser dot get. And here I have to pass the URL. So that is going to be google.com, right? And we'll use the async and await concept here. So await, and of course, if we add await, the function should be also, or the method should be, should be also async, right? And after that, we are going to find multiple elements. Before that, of course, I have to type this within this, right? Now, if I load this page, here we can see by default, the focus is here, right? So it's blinking in the search box. So we know it to find this element, actually, we can use the active element. So I'm going to show you that as well. So here I can say browser and dot switch to. And here we have a function called active element, right? So active element means wherever the current mouse focus is or there or the mouse pointer is there it is going to do something on that right so here i'm going to say send case and here i'm going to pass the value as cricket right so let me just so copy and paste that's it that's absolutely fine now after that we have to find uh, i mean we have to do the enter as well right so i'm just going to use uh, protector dot key and then followed by enter so this is going to type this particular um, string and then it is going to type the hit the enter key right so that is what it means here then once we hit enter it is going to come to the space so of course we have to find the number of words as cricket right? so to do that i'm just going to use the use x path here so here i can say double slash and then followed by star so star means uh, we can find uh, any tag right so it indicates any tag it doesn't matter what tag because of course some of the words may be in the link tag some of the word may be in the span or div or um, label tag or p tag something like that so we don't want to uh, take based on that rather we want to find in each and every tag so here we are going to use this star that's wildcard like any tag name and then followed by we are going to use the square bracket and here i have to say uh, we are going to check this partially because i cannot check this uh, using text for fully right so because 
here you can see here also we have this cricket but it is like live cricket scores and something right so of course i cannot check that fully so i have to do the partial so here i'm going to use the contains and within this i have to pass the text and then comma and within double quotes i have to pass the this word right now this is going to find only the um lower case but we also want to get the upper case values as well right so what we can do is we can use the or condition here so here i'm going to say or and then i'm just going to copy this guy and here i'm going to paste it again and instead of c i am going to make this as capital c right so here we can see we are able to find something like 143 now this count may be a different when we are going to run in our script so i will tell you the reason as well right so that's it so we are going to copy this x path and here we always used to find elements using the element right so here i can say element but now we are going to find multiple elements so here i have to use dot all and within this we have to find uh, using the x path right so we have to pass by dot x path so of course i have to import the by then then followed by x path and here i'm going to place the value right so that's it fine now this is going to return me the web element so i can say let then followed by uh, just i can make this as cricket something like that So now we have to find the number of elements are there right in the word of uh, in the words of crickets right so here we have an inbuilt function called count that is very similar to your uh, length function in the not the function length property in the array right so here i'm going to say await and then followed by crickets dot count so this is going to return me the number of elements i have so i'm going to store that in a maybe count again a count and here we are going to log this so so console.log and then followed by count that's it right so let's see how to call this or how to run this so here uh, we can see this class is not used yet so that's why it's uh, it says that declared but never used but of course we are going to use that okay to use that we are just going to export this class first so because we know already um, that uh, we have to do the export whenever we are going to use any class so here we have to say in JavaScript like exports, then followed by the any name. So it, I'm just going to give the same name. So this we already learned in our JavaScript classes, right? So do not worry about this. So this is going to be very simple. So this is my actual class name, whereas whereas this is like your allies. So we are giving in um, we are giving a name to it, right? Um, now let me create a, another spec file here. So I'm going, just going to create um, crickets dot spec dot js right so that's absolutely fine now if you notice in each and every file i have used this dot spec dot spec that is not mandatory actually but um, that that is how the java i mean the jasmine uh, syntactic sugar looks like so that is the uh, reason i'm following the same convention nothing else so that is not uh, like mandatory you have to follow that's just to uh, make sure that we are following the same standard that are given by the jasmine right so first of course we have to create a describe block and here we are going to write something so like uh, find number of crickets right and then we have to of course write our first eight block and here i'm going to just uh, name it as uh, find cricket so same as this so any meaningful name it's fine so generally uh, within this eight block so whatever the manual test cases we have we just copy the test case name and paste over here that's it right so here i'm going to say this and using the arrow function i'm just going to give this right now we are getting this run test because of this uh, run protector plugin so based when i click on this this particular configuration file is going to trigger right so i hope you have remembered this if you are new you can probably check out that video so i will uh, leave a link somewhere in this place right now we have to use this function so of course i can create an object but the simpler is to make make this as static so that i don't need to create any object i can call this directly right and now if i go to my function so first of course i have to import that so for that i'm going to say recur um, before that let me create an object so const and here i'm going to say just click okay it's equal to then followed by recur 
and here I have to pass the file name. So that's going to be dot slash then followed by the class name. So not the class name, actually this is the file name, right? Now dot js is not mandatory. You can, you can give, but it is not necessary here, right? And then followed by here, we are going to call this. So before that, of course, I can call this directly actually. So cricket dots, then find crickets, then followed by this. Uh, constructor not though we don't need the constructor we can call this directly right so because we are using this static function here right so basically based on this particular recurve function we are using this class and we are calling this method now this doesn't look very good so we can of course change this but we will see that after once we do the execution here right so let me just try to click on this here and let's see what happens Okay, so the test case ran actually, but uh, I believe in my in our previous video we are learning about this headless. So that is the problem here. So let me just comment this and let me clear it. But we didn't see any console.log statement here. So let me check the script as well here. So if I go to this and we are getting this. So let's try to run again. So let's see. Okay, so it actually didn't run so the reason is very simple so here we are using this async that means of course when we are going to call this of course we have to do the await as well right so here i'm going to say await and here i'm going to make this as async and then followed by if i try to run this now let's see what happens Okay, so we are getting Angular could not form. So of course, uh, this is expected because we are uh, uh, running our test script in non-Angular application. So that is the reason. So within this method, I'm going to first say that uh, await then followed by browser dot wait for Angular enable equal to false. That means within the parameter, we have to give this as false, right? That's it. So I hope you remember this, right? So whenever we are going to run this in non-Angular applications, we'll expect we can expect this exception here says that Angular could not found, right? So I'm just going to clear this up and again I'm going to run this. Okay, so here we can see we are able to get 115. And if I uh, see this, so see my browser has been closed. So let me just run this again. So again, we can see the browser. Okay, so it's actually running here and it's going to type cricket and enter and then it found the elements and we are getting as 115. The result will be varied when we open in the uh, this uh, normal browser and when it's going to find in this uh, automation browser because when we open this in Google so it's uh, of course going to get my history and based on that it's going to give us some suggestion but when we run the same script in automation it's going to defer that is how Google works normally so let's not worry about that but you got, got the idea right so how to find multiple elements so this is a basic very basic scenario here so let me recap quickly so here uh, I believe this uh, stuff we already know so we are just going to get this URL and based on this active element we are typing and then we are hitting enter and then this is the syntax you have to remember so element dot all and here within this we have this by dot x path where we are passing this x path that is going to find both the cricket um, text in uppercase and as well as lowercase so that is the reason we are using this or condition in our x path. And then for by we are using this function called count so that is equivalent of your length now of course this is going to return us promise so of course we have to use the await and async everywhere because we have disabled the promise manager now let's say that if i do not have this promise manager i mean we are not going to use this async and await then how we are going to achieve this right 
So let me comment this or else uh, let me just copy and let me comment this for your reference. And here I'm going to just do the same but without using any async and await, right? So I'm just going to delete this. So that's absolutely fine. And here we are using this count and I cannot just uh, print this directly. So let me show you that as well. So here also I'm going to remove this async and this await that doesn't make any sense. And if I hit run and run test, Okay, so we got this but we are getting this promise as pending so this is the reason we are using async and await but to solve this in traditional way um, so let me remove this assign assigned variable and here i'm going to say uh, dot then and then followed by this is going to return us the count here so count is nothing but a local variable here nothing though or nothing much about it so this is just a variable and here i can bring this up here and let's try to run this again Okay, so we didn't get any answer because uh, of course we have to disable the promise manager or uh, without that I cannot use this then function here. So what can I do is I can go to my uh, configuration and here I'm just going to make this as true so that I can run that. So if I go to the spec file and if I try to hit enter now, I mean hit the run test. Okay, so we got the same exact output 115. So this is how we have to use this um, then concept. So you can go with the zinc and await that is recommended because in the upcoming version of protector, the uh, as, uh, then function is not going to work. So that is how they documented. So we have talked about this in detail in our zinc and await uh, video. So probably you can check that. Okay, so that's it. We have learned how to use this find elements. But before wind up, I'm going to just fix this as well. So here, if I go to the spec here, we can see we are importing those using the require and then we are using the same object to call the class and the functions, but we can simplify this. So here, if I go and here in this VS code suggestion here, we are getting this bulk. If I click on it says that convert to ES6 module. So I'm just going to do that. So here you can see everything is changed to import. And then here also the export has been changed to the CS6 uh, syntax, right? And then followed by, if I go to this particular spec, and here also I have to change this to ES6 module. So that's it, that's fine. Now here you can see it's automatically changed everything, right? So I'm going to just run this again here. So run test. So of course it is going to give us the same output just to make sure that it's working fine. So same answer, same thing, same everything. So we got this, right? So this is how we can use this import statement, but uh, directly you cannot use the import statement so please remember we have to use this label register or else it is not going to work right so that's fine and i think this is pretty much enough for this particular video so the reason of learning this element dot all is because in the next video we'll learn about uh, filter function map function and also we'll learn about the web table concept so this is the basic stuff for all those stuff uh, so i think this is pretty much cool now so i I believe you have enjoyed the video and if you like the video give, give a like and if you are new to the channel please consider subscribing to the channel and click on the bell notification so that you will get instant update. Um, see you in the next one very soon. Take care.